with a block of the Hour of Technology. This session will be hosted by Nicolas Fiumarelli, software developer at LACNIC, whom I invite to come to the rostrum. Let's see. Let's wait until they're all here. Now, I give Nico the floor. Thank you, Sandra. Can you hear me? Hello, everybody. Welcome to the time of or the hour of technology, LACNIC 37. We have very interesting topics. The, uh, uh, the technology hour is a space that uh, we have conducted where the staff of LACNIC shares some projects, initiatives for research based on technology that we understand that can be of interest to the entire community. Throughout the session, you'll be able to ask uh, in the Q&A panel, and we will respond after each presentation. And then you can uh, ask the questions uh, in the room. Elisa Peirano is an R&D analyst at LACNIC, and she will give you an introduction of the so-called RIPE Atlas probes, giving you the, uh, the landscape of the region to, and uh, an invitation to deploy this probe so that we can have a better internet measurements in our region. Elisa? Thank you, Nicolas. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. This while that we have uh, in um, the uh, technology time, I wanted to present uh, uh, the platform. In at Lecnic, we need to to uh, conduct studies as to, for the behave to see what the behavior of the internet is. I think that all the communities are interested in knowing how people are connected in the networks of their own countries as well as in other countries in the region. As an example, the, uh, in the LACNIC um, web, website, we have uh, certain measurements of the, the internet with reports, the use of uh, root servers and DNS and the connectivity in the LAC region that was conducted in 2020. So what happens in these situations? Well, we don't have a regional coverage in an open platform. And although we have uh, uh, options that, that you pay, it depends on all the services that they offer, where are the nodes that uh, they use for measurements, what kind of measurements they offer, not always are they the ones that we'd like to measure. And in addition, as a community, we are not, uh, we don't participate in these situations. So with this in mind, I wanted to tell you about the RIPE, at RIPE Atlas uh, network. It's a global network of devices that are called probes and anchors that are constantly connecting connectivity in the internet. It's free of charge and it's community-based, that is, we the, uh, from ISPs to end users, we are the ones that put uh, the probes in our networks to uh, activate, uh, to enable measurements. Anybody can uh, 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 have access to this these data, and there are some measurements um, that, uh, uh, for instance, uh, and those that are uh, users of a RIPE Atlas can enter the system, can uh, generate uh, credits, and to customize the measurements depending on their needs. But to be able to make the most of all uh, these uh, 
uh, features, we need to have a, number, a significant number of probes representing as many networks as possible throughout the region. So let's see what coverage is like in our region. This is a global map. In yellow, you have the countries that have no probes or only limited number of probes. And as the sky blue becomes darker, these are countries that have a larger number of probes, such as the case of the United States and Germany. Now, regarding our region, we have very pale colors. In some countries, there are no probes at all. And in other countries, well, they could have a larger number of probes. We also have the situation in Colombia. Maybe you cannot see it very clearly because they are sort of overlapping. There are 10 connected probes and 27 that are disconnected or have been abandoned. This means that for some reason, because an office was transferred and the probe was disconnected or the hardware some had some problem and stopped responding. But the good thing is that there are procedures in order to reactivate these probes. So if anyone here is aware that they recall that they, someone had a probe and can check the status, please let us know so that we can reactivate these once again. So how can you become involved? I'd like to invite you to become involved and let me explain how. First of all, you have to host a probe. There are two types of probes. One is a hardware probe, which is a small box that you connect to a router. And then there's a software probe, which is installed in a virtual machine or in a server that is running 100% of the time. At LACNIC, of course, we're here to support you in whatever you might need from information to know what is happening, how these are used, or what is the meaning of the, the purpose of these, and also how to install these probes specifically. As a result of that, we started organizing deployathons to set up software probes. This is an instance where we share experiences and we also expand on the platform and install the probes. In November last year, we organized the first deployathon with Mexico and Bolivia. And this was really a very fruitful experience. Those who had set up probes told us how they performed, and if they had any issues, they explained how they had solved these. And also, they even some of these even shared with us what they wished to do with the measurements they had. One of the lessons learned from this deployathon is that at the end of the day, many of the probes became disconnected. And this is because this had been done with, with personal laptops. So when they turned off the laptop, the probe was disconnected. And one of the things of the software probes is that they have to be connected to the internet 100% of the time. Otherwise, they cannot be used for measurement purposes. And we understand that in large organizations with a good infrastructure, you can have the probe permanently turned on. But in the case of an end user or a small office, this might not be the case. So what we are proposing is to use the Raspberry Pis as an option for the hardware probes. Although we can ask them from RIPE and CC, it has happened in our region that these are retained at customs. So we always take advantage of the annual meetings of NACNIC twice a year so that some representative from RIPE and CC can bring probes so that we can set these up. And of course, these are normally an unlimited number. So we thought that with Raspberry Pi devices that can be purchased in the markets in every country and in whatever amount you can need, you can set up the software there so we can ensure that they are connected 100% of the time. So recapping, I would like to invite you to become informed, to contact us for whatever you might need to involve your communities, to set up groups of interest, 
you can ask us to host a probe during the event. We already spoke with some people who are interested. We still have some hardware probes. Those who are interested in these can let us know. And also to organize webinars or deploy athons to deploy software probes together with RIPE NCC. Mikel is with us today to help you with this. Tomorrow, Friday, from 9 to 10, we'll be at the booth distributing the probes or providing information that you might need, the same as Michele, who will be there with me. You can contact us also by email. This is one of the addresses, atlaslac at lacnic.net. One of the things that I wanted to tell you is that we recently recorded a podcast on internet measurements. We have a panel made up of women 100%, and this will be available in LACNIC's website in two weeks' time. So I invite you to contact us to, become inf to get informed, and we'll support you in whatever you might need. So that is all, and I think we have time for questions. So please take advantage of the opportunity so that we can achieve this big deployment of probes in our region. Thank you, Elisa. We have no questions in the Q&A. If anyone has questions here in the room, let us wait and see if anyone goes up to the microphones. Island. Yes. Good afternoon. I am interested in the topic of the probes. The question is that when you speak about a small company, what, how many number of users would you recommend for setting that pro software probes or hardware probes? Well, you just set up your probe and it's connected to the RIPE Atlas network. And the probe itself has no major requirements in terms of software or hardware. You just have to connect it. If you have the hardware probe, you have to connect it with a cable to the router. And in the case of the software probe, you just set this up. The organizations I'm speaking of have about 500 to 800 users. Can you repeat the companies? for which I would be I was speaking of, of about 500 to 800 people. You can even set this up in your own home. There's no minimum requirement in terms of numbers of users for setting up a probe. Thank you. We have a question in the Q&A from Hugo Salgado. Just a second, please. There is a technical issue here, but we can ask Hugo to contact Elisa directly. So we look forward to seeing you at the booth, or if you can contact us by email. Now it is Guillermo Pereira's turn. I will read the question out. Hugo Salgado says, as an intensive user of the RIPE Atlas network, I think there could be a directory of the research of the region that has benefited from the probes. In this way, the community will realize the benefit of maintaining these probes. Yes, Hugo, thank you very much. That's quite true. Thank you very much. As I was saying, now is the time for Guillermo Pereira. He's security analyst at LACNIC. And he'll, he'll tell us about me LACNIC security information module. He will tell us how these data can help us, how this data can help network and or system administrators. He will make a presentation of the information available through the MINAC leak security module. Well, as Nicolas was saying, let me share with you 
the module we have at Milaknik and the projects we have at the CSERT to provide that information. This is an outline of the projects we have at Laknik CSERT. One is a honey net network and the honeypot network that we have with many Laknik members. The honeypot network simulates a vulnerable systems system. The attackers take action there. We extract indicators and commitments, ports, URLs, and then we take them to a dashboard to analyze these. We extract those and send them to my LACNIC. This HoneyNet project is open to any member who wishes to join. You can access our website. I'm going to give you the URL. We also have the open resolvers projects, both for V6 and V4. The V6 project is together with the R&D people, Alejandra. We use a DNS server managed by Milaknik to extract IPs and find IPs that allow recursive open queries. And similar is, is the case with IPv4. In the case of IPv4, we do network scanning. We don't know it, do it so frequently. We extract IPs. When we see that there are IPs in the region, we put them in Milaknix module. In addition to that, we have feeds, third-party feeds of organizations, some are members, that have their own honeypots networks and do intelligence to detect what types of botnets or attacks these are like, what are the vulnerabilities of those IPs. They can be botnets or Mirai or others. And we also send it to the Milaknik module. This, some of the problems that might be in these IPs that we send to the module, these IPs are susceptible to DDoS attacks if they are open resolvers, if there is some kind of botnet that send spam email. Any of these problems might lead to that IP landing in a blacklist, but there are companies that just create blacklists. And this is, if they receive attacks from these IPs, they block not only those IPs, but they put the entire range in the blacklist. And then other security issues, these IPs, there is a voice somewhere. We have to take into account that these IPs under, are under control of attackers, and attackers can take malicious action with these. Now, going into the module, the security module of Milaknik, those who can access Milaknik can access with a username. This is a security module down here. So you can access the security module, and in your screen, you have a description of what the module is about, our contact details, and the type of information. After that, you can access the dashboard. There is a pie chart here. So there are two pie charts. One is on IPv4 and the other is on IPv6. In this example, I didn't have too many committed IPs, but you will see that there is a number of committed IPs. Those are the ones that we detected with the projects and with the feeds. 
IPs that had been involved in some security event. At the bottom, you have a table with a date on which this was detected. The organization, the, involved, the IP in question, the type of attack, if it was a botnet or malicious attack or open resolvers, and a brief description, and then a link to our website to have more information to determine how this could be corrected and access to the project as Open Resolver or HoneyNet. And also the number of sources from where we detect. Uh, sometimes they can come from many sources that are part of a botnet or an Open Resolver, for instance, or some other. So potential solutions, uh, for uh, we don't have much time to give the solution for each uh, type, but for botnets, there are different uh, actions depending on the botnet. Usually botnets are computers of end uh, clients, so it's a bit, a bit difficult, but there are botnets that can be uh, prevented. For instance, here I leave you a link. This is... Uh, um, of Nick BR, a project by Nick BR to avoid spam. It's antispam.br. And how to handle the post 25 in um, end users. And the open resolvers in our network, we have in a web, we uh, give instructions to how to restrict the networks uh, to which you provide the service and to correct the firmware, to give service only to reduced. Uh, um, um, uh, service and uh, well, you can correct the firmware and you can block the CPE ports. There are several ways you can uh, solve this. And the malicious activity, two different uh, actions depending on the host. If you have any doubts as to what may be happening behind the, an IP, uh, with Malicious activity, if we know the, uh, that it's been in contact with one of our honeypots, and so in, in that IP, somebody uh, malicious took um, uh, over that uh, IP. So we should analyze what's happening. So that was the brief talk. Thank you. And here I leave you the contacts just in case you want to enter. And if you have any doubts, you can enter Milaknik. This, and you can also visit our website to see the projects more in detail. Thank you, Guillermo. There are no questions in the Q&A. Uh, if anybody in the room wants to ask any questions, So if there are no questions, now our last uh, panelist is Gerardo Rada, who's the leader of systems development at LACNIC, and he will introduce some new modules of MILACNIC called the beta services. He's going to show what uh, this uh, beta tools uh, consist of in MILACNIC. It's a module that uh, uh, provides dynamism and uh, speed. It's one of the things that MILACNIC can offer its members through these to tools. Go ahead, Gerardo. Yes, thank you, Nico. Well, I want to thank those who stayed until now this technology time, I'm going to, we are going to speak of the beta tools uh, space in the Milaknik app. Let's wait for the presentation. There it is. So, well, you have a couple of memes. That's the first, that's Rose of the Titanic. She's the one who tells a story. And here there's another meme. Basically, we laugh because there's some truth in it. Sometimes solutions arrive 
there's there's a lot of time since uh, the problem appears and you have the idea and you deliver a solution. So people look sometimes for temporary solutions or uh, make attempts uh, to uh, solve the problem or they or when the solution comes, the temporary solution remains as a definitive and uh, the Although in Lacnic we try to avoid, uh, to prevent that from happening, it is true that we do not force uh, providing new services if we don't, uh, if we are not sure that those services have a high level of quality, so the service has to be well communicated, the infrastructure where it is deployed has to support the use of that service or the app, which the service should be monitored, the legal security aspects need to be considered before deploying a new service, Communi external communications have to be established, and so all those issues need to be solved. Um, if you're going to work with people outside like Nick. So a lot of hard work is done for services to do their job. And then there are a lot of complementary activities to ensure that what uh, I mentioned earlier really happens. So it would not, if we offer a new service and then afterwards we have to discard it or turn it off for some time because it's, it's failing, then it would be a very negative thing. So the accumulation of the times for building the, uh, the, the new product and all the complementary activities, it adds to time and uh, so there's a delay between the time when the moment the problem appears and the solution is found. There you have the life cycle of a project in the vertical axis. You have the areas of the resources and the horizontal line. You have the process. And so you have the, uh, the problem, the, the idea. Then you need uh, internal coordination, the, the time for build, for constructing, for building the solution, defining the processes. There's an initial solution, then there's a cycle where you um, improve it and uh, you identify opportunities for, uh, for improvement. You get a more stable solution. You also have to pay attention to the external communications and uh, the support, both of the process and the infrastructure. And we also consider the maintenance and improvement of that new service. So the, uh, if we add up all of those things, one understands why it takes so long between uh, the occurrence of a problem and uh, the final solution. So in uh, the beta uh, space, uh, beta tool space of Milaknik, the idea is to define a complementary or alternative process to provide faster solutions to the, the problems that we run into. We use a resource that developers like, that is the beta service. That, uh, that is, we have an implicit agreement between the users and those that provide support. And uh, basically, it uh, m enables us to, to see that the, the service that is being tested may have failures or maybe it's not optimized by the time you start working. If there's a se serious problem, the service may have a timeout or sometimes the service as the, uh, the developers receive feedback, they make changes. So that license that we have, the beta, the beta um, tool mm, gives us an opportunity to approach uh, the things from another point of view. Maybe the life cycle doesn't appear, they appear reduced, and we can bring faster solutions to the members. Let's see some examples of uh, apps that are already available in tools. The tool space has been created so dynamically we can start uh, um, um, put their different uh, products 
and people can see whether that uh, uh, product that is a better product now uh, can in uh, finally become a, a final product so and so the first thing is for instance unifying resources and before Milaknik existed, when you were going to sub-assign resources, sub-allocate resources to a client, and you were going to, for instance, you have a client one, and you wanted to give more resources, you have to identify the number of the client within the registry. So using that identifier, you looked for the company, and you assigned uh, resources. If you didn't know that, you could write the name and that created a second company and you gave the resources to that second company. So once once we had uh, an organization that started using Milagnik, they continued to use the old registry or the two at the same time, and they had a bunch of clients that were duplicated, basically. They had things like this. Ministry of the Interior appeared uh, two or three times. Each time they assigned an IP, they created another one. So with this um, app, the existence of this in uh, the, this app in the tools and uh, better tools, we uh, we gave an option to unify resources. We analyze the names of the clients of the companies, and if we find companies with similar numbers, we ask them to unify. So you have a pre-visualization. You end. Um, we detect what are the companies that seem to be the first, and from then on, you unify them, and uh, then the resources are given to who needs it. So that service is in the tool, in the tool uh, space, and if we receive good feedback, it might uh, remain there. Another development in tools is to um, detach from organizations. The IP registry doesn't change. We need to have the registry of all the IP assignments since uh, allocations since they were created and all the changes uh, that the users had uh, that ever existed. So the uh, concept of eliminating an organization doesn't exist as such because we ha always have to keep the registries. What we are offering here is an option of um, severing your uh, links with the organizations. For instance, their Ministry of the Interior and um, Rui Interior. We, s we give users the possibility of severing the relation of their account with uh, those. So maybe there are old clients that can sever the relations from them. And, or maybe this person unified the resources of an organization and uh, there were uh, many other organizations and it doesn't make sense to continue to be linked to them. This is another tool that is present in this uh, beta space. This report is in LACNIC. We already had the possibility uh, from a user or an organization, we could get all the information in one single page. The IPs that they have been assigned and the clients that have those IPs, if those clients have sub assignments, we can see that in the interface. And so depending on the company, if it was a large company, then we had a long sheet with a very comprehensive report of the state of the IPs. Um, in maybe in, in Lagnig, somebody saw the screen and asked for a, a similar one because they wanted to know the, uh, the status of uh, the blocks that were available. So now we are going to include this possibility in the tools, in the better tool space. It's a screen that is uh, expensive because it has to conduct a lot of searches. It's possible that we'll need a cycle to uh, uh, optimize it, but the beta label gives us that possibility of bringing a quick uh, solution so that people can start using it and we can see how it can be further improved. I, don't, I didn't include this in the slide, but another resources 
that we have in the better space is the tools labs dot uh, dot net that was presented in other events it's an interface where you can access all the databases handled by LACNIC <coughs> registries are IR, RPKI, who is our DAB uh, uh, queries a, a number of systems that present data that are centralized with this tool. This tool is in a beta state. Therefore, it's within the beta tools space of Milaknik. There you see the link with which you access this resource. It's at the bottom of the page. In Milaknik, you see that there you have beta services and you have a description of those services and the access, the links to, to access some of the services that appear in beta will be production services. That is that the data that you load there will be production data and other here um, you will see demos so you can use the demo and see how it works or use the production systems directly and we want to reassure you that all the services shown there at least the security characteristic features have been contemplated access restrictions and things such as that are not are taken into account because the solution is delivered very rapidly. This is what I had to share with you. Thank you, Gerardo. We have no questions so far in the Q&A. Does anyone in the room wish to use the microphone? Yes. Good afternoon. We have a question back there. Yes. The system you showed that where you regroup the assignments, doesn't this summarize the prefixes when you do the regrouping? No, we don't do summarization. We, we replace the organization, the old organization with the new. We don't summarize, and that's an important component because the reverses that I have or the sub-assignments below that are maintained. Thank you. Thank you, Gerardo. Thank you very much to all the panelists.